October the 12th, 2023. As you're looking at new information coming in from overseas, and uh, they're talking about, this is translated from Greek, so it doesn't quite read exactly the way most of us are used to seeing it or reading it, but it says Iran responds with tank deployment on the Iraq border, green light to Hezbollah to engage, Hamas reinforced with 7,000 Shiites, Iran's ballistic arsenal on standby. Think about what we're talking about here. Continues, it says, mass movement of units of the 92nd Armored Division of the Iranian Army have been observed for a few hours. T-72 tanks were spotted moving in the Kazakhstan province, which is located in the southwest of the country and borders Iraq and the Persian Gulf. At the same time, movements of the Fatah-110 ballistic missiles were detected. Iran is on heightened alert, targeting U.S. and other bases in the Middle East. Guys, there's something that I've seen in the last couple of days, just looking at different people that report on this and kind of trying to put two and two together. But a lot of them are very concerned here in the U.S. with uh, possible uh, entry in the southern border. And they're talking about being very well prepared to protect yourself at all times, anywhere you go. I don't know how... It is in whatever state you're in. Don't uh, break the law. But if you can't go somewhere where you can protect yourself, maybe it's not somewhere you need to be. Just saying. It says the Fatah 110 has a range of 300 kilometers and its third generation has improved accuracy. So it, they don't have to attack the bases to um, physically attack them with manpower. They can, uh, with this type of... Uh, missiles you can take them out or you can attempt to depending on what kind of uh, um, protection that the air bases have you know something to shoot down incoming missiles like the iron dome or something more sophisticated but there's a appears to be a lot of this type of weaponry there a while ago the aircraft used by iran's foreign minister hossein amir abdulun landed in beirut International Airport in Lebanon after taking off earlier from Baghdad, Iraq. There's strong concern that the Shiites are organizing in a center established in Lebanon. This is from the Iranian foreign minister. He said, if Israel does not stop its attacks on civilians in Gaza, the region will face new situations. Israel cannot impose a complete siege on Gaza, bombard civilians, and commit war crimes without response. Now, Guys, that are kind of both of them are guilty of some of this. Regardless of whose side you on, innocent civilians should be left out of it. Both sides, I'm saying. The continuation of the crimes will receive a response from the rest of the axis. The Zionist entity will be responsible for it. Mass movement of units of the 92nd Tank Division of the Iranian Army is recorded in the so-called Eastern Kurdistan. The western and northwestern part of Iran, in which the majority of the inhabitants of the region are Kurds. According to, uh, according to reports, all the videos originate from the Iran-Iraq border, and the traffic is directed towards Iraq. Some information states that they were sent north to the border with uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey during the Nagorno-Karabakh War and are now returning due to the crisis with Israel. But again, the timing of the return shows something. The 92nd Panzer Division was formed under the Shah in September 1980, among other formations. It was deployed along the border with Iraq and actively participated in the protracted Iran-Iraq War. This is truly one of the best equipped units of the Iranian Army. The headquarters of the department is located in the southwest of Iran in the city of Avaz. Now, as you scroll down the article that I'm going to link, guys, you'll see that there's a lot of videos here that show some of this movement. I'm not going to show them here because of copyright, but it won't take you but a minute to come here. And again, it's going to, if you, you more than likely, you've already realized how to translate or get your browser to translate this. There's a lot of comments and uh, that are below the videos like this from different people that have Macs and uh, iPhones and things like that, too, so that's a little different from Google. 
Iraq media reports that the commander, the Iraqi Shia militia, visited Lebanon. Now, remember, there's um, 7,000 added to the Shiite list. It is expected by the end of this week fighters from Iraq will reach Israel's northern border to support Hamas troops coming in from the north. Now, Iran, no, excuse me, Israel knows that they can't throw everything into Gaza. They're talking about 300 plus thousand troops and all. Even Russia's reporting on that it would become a trap trying, and it would, in the sense that you would be throwing a lot of weight into southern Israel when you've got problems on the West Bank and, as we see, coming to the north. Now, in a video the other night, we talked about uh, forced prophecy or forcing prophecy. And if you think about it, we don't know how much is being forced, but whoever wrote it, wrote these prophecies, knew the plan, and this plan is an ancient plan. You understand what I'm saying? From the Old Testament to the New Testament. But one thing about it, regardless of who wrote it, and if they're forcing prophecy, just saying, then we're being given the playbook, right? Even if they're forcing it on us, they're doing what's been written. And so it's kind of a blowback on them. But supposedly, they're supposed to tell us everything they do. But again, forced prophecy is very a real thing. It could, there's no way you could die, deny that they have the capability to do it because there's been thousands of years of the same ruler in place in many places, the same, same entity, the same organization, same one. So it's a long plan. But again, even, even if it is forced, then we are using it, Old Testament, Revelations, as their blueprint, the battle plan, so we know what to do. If it's going to be done like this, regardless, it's, uh, or regardless if the, it's set up as the Antichrist coming first, which we do know happens, regardless, we're being told and we've been shown in prophecy what they're going to do. And it looks like we're right at that point. It said, according to reports in the Arab press, between three and 7,000 Shia militias from Iraq will join the fighting alongside Hamas. Says uh, the uh, leader or the commander of Hezbollah's unit in Iraq warned of Iraqi fighters entering the conflict on the side of Hamas. He said that if Washington enters the conflict, forces under its control will strike U.S. bases in the Middle East with missiles and UAVs. The entry of Iraqi fighters indicate the development of the Arab-Israeli conflict, which could soon lead to a global war in the Middle East. I don't think it's going to stay in the Middle East. Our open borders. Also this afternoon, another piece in the puzzle. Scene of conflict with Iran. Britain sends ships and aircraft to Israel. USA sends A-10 squadrons. Evacuate Sederot of 30,000 inhabitants. Guys, that was one of the first places that was hit in the attack. And it's very close to the area that they want to create that corridor between Gaza and the West Bank. I think that's why they was one of the first ones. But they're telling them to get out because it's about to get real there. The UAE, United Arab Emirates, warned Assad not to get involved in the war. So they're, they're forcing everyone to get involved. And guys, we already knew that the U.S. had sent um, at least one aircraft carrier a group in, and they're uh, getting ready to send another one in. It's on every news. But it says, war preparations that appear to target Iran are taking place in the Middle East. Great Britain, following the U.S., decided to support Israeli military by sending Royal Navy ships off the coast of the country. At the same time, the British Air Force will begin conducting surveillance flights over Israeli territory. And like I said, this isn't private info because just the way it reads and it, it's kind of strange that they're talking about what they're going to do but it again this is not conspiracy theories this is from the u.s state department today it said 
The U.S. State Department announced that starting tomorrow, it will begin the processing of or, or process of organizing the evacuation of American citizens from Israel using charter flights from Tel Aviv International Airport. This is the U.S. State Department saying this. Now, what would be the chance that Tel Aviv International Airport would be targeted? Finally, the Israeli army ordered the evacuation of the city of Sederot with a population of 30,000. This is a colossal undertaking. The area looks set to become a huge Israeli military base. We are ready to operate any, everywhere to deal with any threat to the Israeli people. Not only are our borders, but the entire Middle East, if necessary. This is an IDF spokesman. And like I said, guys, they're bringing everyone into this on different sides. At the same time, the United Arab Emirates warned Assad in Syria not to intervene in the Hamas-Israeli war and not to allow attacks on Israel from Syrian soil. It says, we remind you that Israel warned Syria and Assad through France two warnings so far and a bombing of airports in Damascus and Aleppo today. They tore the airports up just before I think it was either an Iranian or Iraqi official was coming in there to set up some kind of deal, you know, on the other side of this event. So they just said, no, we're not going to allow that type of thing to happen. Plus, they can use the airports to bring in munitions and troops and things like that. So it, everything's gotten very real very quickly, guys. Again, a blueprint, the, a prophecy is unfolding right before our eyes. And we need to be prepared. Again, a lot of people, big-time people, are talking about being very well prepared in every way. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.